Here's a quick look at four of the companies that are furthest along in the development of a functional cure for type 1 diabetes. Real quick, a functional cure means that they aren't actually stopping and fixing the whole immune system, attacking and destroying your own insulin producing cells. Instead, they've developed a cure that works around that broken system. Some people would say that's not a cure, it's a treatment. That's why we call it a functional cure because it technically functions in a way where you no longer have to take daily insulin therapy and your blood sugar will be managed automatically by this new therapy. What I really appreciate about all four of these clinical trials, they're focused on curing type 1 diabetes in people who've lived with it for a long time. And that's important because there's other awesome research happening in people who are newly diagnosed, those people are still producing some of their own insulin. For those of us who've lived with this disease for years or decades, we're probably not producing any of our own insulin. So our cure therapy is gonna need to be totally different than the cure for people who are newly diagnosed. Clinical trial number one, Vertex. You've probably heard the most about Vertex in the news. They've gotten a lot more press than all of these other clinical trials. Right now they have two trials happening, VX880 and VX264. VX880 uses immunosuppression therapy. We don't wanna hear about that one because that is not the one that's eventually gonna help most of us with type one diabetes. The reason they're using immunosuppression therapy is you know, kind of probably twofold. First, it's the easiest way to test if their insulin producing stem cell therapy actually works in the human body. There are so many immunosuppression drugs that we already know work very well. So they can just take those drugs and use them to experiment with their awesome manufactured proprietary insulin producing stem cell product. The second reason though is that there are people living with type 1 diabetes, they're struggling to even live a normal life. For those people, and that's a small number of people, the trade-off of immunosuppression therapy and the many side effects that come with those drugs is worth it because diabetes has had such a devastating impact on their life. And no, type 1 diabetes is not easy for any of us, but many of us are able to live full lives while we deal with the daily constant burden of this disease. All right, their second trial though, that's the one that really applies to most of us. That's VX264. VX264 takes Vertex's proprietary insulin producing stem cell therapy product and surgically implants it in your body with a device that protects those cells from your immune system. Without that device, your immune system is gonna attack and destroy those cells. And you'll notice this is a key feature in basically all four of these clinical trials. It's one thing to create the cells that produce insulin. The next challenge is protecting them from your immune system. Right now, VX264 is in clinical trials. We're waiting for the next update. Their last update was about VX880. What they shared is exciting for VX264. In a nutshell, Vertex's insulin producing cell product is effective. It's still working in the first recipients in the VX880 trial. So now this is several years later since they first received those cells and the cells are still working. That's a really good sign for the VX264 trial that's gonna use the same product but with a different way of protecting those cells from your immune system. The second one is Cernova, which we've also heard quite a bit about in the news in the past year. Cernova has also developed their own proprietary stem cell product, the cells that produce insulin just like the cells that are supposed to produce insulin in your body naturally. Cernova has a pouch that is surgically implanted to protect those cells from your immune system. And you know, we hear the word pouch and device and we're thinking like this pouch with a whole bunch of cells in it, but these cells are teeny and the pouch is teeny. Cernova's pouch is actually surgically implanted just under the skin on your abdomen. It's really, really small. So how does the insulin actually get out into your bloodstream? Just like Vertex's technology, your blood vessels can actually go through that pouch, Cernova's pouch with those cells that are producing insulin and your blood vessels will pick up the insulin and take it to, you know, everywhere in your body that needs insulin. 
Meanwhile, the cells stay in the pouch and the cells are protected by that pouch. How long will those cells survive in that pouch? They don't really know yet because the clinical trial has only been going on for like less than a year. So, you know, time will tell. The next clinical trial is from Sana Biotechnology. Sana is just getting started with their human trials. They actually haven't shared an update on how that's going yet. But earlier this year, they did share some pretty cool results from their primate study using their therapy. This approach is a little different than Cernova and Vertex. Sauna took islet cells from a certain type of monkey. Islet cells are where beta cells are then eventually produced. Beta cells produce insulin. So the researchers took these islet cells from the monkey and genetically edited these cells to become hypoimmune. Hypoimmunity means the cells were able to hide from the immune system. In a person with type one diabetes, that's critical. But these cells came from a monkey. So it's one thing for the cells to hide from your immune system. They also have to hide from just the body's general attack on something that is foreign, right? Sana's human trial with their therapy is just getting started. In fact, they're not even sharing the results from that trial until late September of 2024. Fingers crossed for good news. So how do you find a monkey that has type 1 diabetes? Unfortunately, they had to cause type 1 diabetes in this monkey using a drug that basically causes the same attack from the immune system on the cells that produce insulin as the attack that you'd have in natural type 1 diabetes. I am sure that the animal rights advocates don't love this. Unfortunately, all of this research involves studies on animals. So the genetically edited cells were implanted in the monkey with type 1 diabetes. No immunosuppression therapy was necessary. Before the monkey received these genetically edited cells, it was taking two units of insulin per day to manage its blood sugar levels. They managed tightly controlled diabetes in this monkey for six months. After the monkey received the genetically edited cells, they started weaning the monkey off its insulin. They decreased the monkey's insulin dose by about a half unit every three days. So within only a couple weeks, the monkey was off insulin. And that's it. Then they watched the monkey's blood sugars for six months. The monkey received zero immunosuppression therapy. The only thing it received during this trial was the genetically edited insulin producing cells. For that six month period, the monkey experienced no significant side effects from the therapy, but it did gain a little bit of weight. They also saw that there was no sign of the monkey's immune system flaring up in response to these foreign cells. So that hypoimmunity worked. The immune system didn't see the cells didn't care about the cells, didn't want to destroy the cells. This monkey study was enough to demonstrate that the therapy is safe. So that gives them the green light to start human clinical trials. Hopefully they share the update on those clinical trials in late September. All right, the next one has not started human trials, but it's one to watch, Seraxis. Seraxis developed their own lab-grown islet cell called the Seraxis islet. Remember, islet cells produce beta cells and beta cells produce insulin. Every company has a different name for their cute device that is surgically implanted to protect their cells from your immune system. Seraxis likes to call their device an implantable biocompatible device that protects the cells from immune recognition, which like all the other studies, means it's protecting the cells from being seen and attacked and destroyed by your immune system. Similar to Vertex and Cernova, your blood vessels can actually grow through this device, pick up the insulin, take the insulin to every part of the body where it needs to go, while the cells stay protected in the device. In the mice with type 1 diabetes, they surgically implanted that device containing the Seraxis islet cell product, and the mice sustained normal blood sugar levels for nine months. That was the length of the study. Could it have kept going beyond nine months? We'll have to wait and see. The implant was deemed safe. There were no noticeable significant side effects. It was considered well tolerated, which gave it the green light to pursue human trials. 
all of this research is very cool and very exciting, but none of it is going to cure type 1 diabetes like tomorrow or even next year or even probably five or 10 years from now. This process takes time. It also takes a lot of money, like millions and millions of dollars to even just conduct the study, let alone, you know, bring this to fruition, bring it to the consumer market. That takes billions of dollars. So we have to just sit and wait and be patient and live our lives with type 1 diabetes as best we can, hoping that one or many of these therapies works its way to the consumer market where we can all actually stand in line and sign up for our functional cure. Hey, stay up to date on all this research and more by signing up for my newsletter. There's a subscription link in the notes below.